let's do something fun. This is a clip. I saw this clip on Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it from Captain Disillusion, and it's a great clip, and I want to do a video analysis of it, so that's what I'm going to do. It's a great opportunity to practice our video analysis, so let's just, let me just show you the clip. I've already got it loaded into a tracker video analysis. That was pretty awesome. Great job. I love it. And so, you know, if you haven't seen Cap Captain Disillusion, you should, because he's awesome. And, you know, he, he really goes through and shows how to make fake stuff. So, obviously that jumping out of the floor is fake, so I want to analyze that, because that's what I do. It's kind of like a, a faking the faker, but he's great. So, let's look at the motion of him coming up through the floor and uh, and see if it if it agrees with the way it should be in the real world. Okay, so he's getting pushed up. So, let's just use tracker video analysis. This is a free program. I'll put a link down below. Uh, and I'm going to mark the location of him in each frame uh, to get a position versus time. And then we can, we can talk about that. So, let's do that first. The first thing I want to do in here is to put my coordinate axis. So this is the X, Y axis. You can put it wherever you want. It doesn't really matter, but I like to see it anyway. The next thing I need to do is say, well, how big is stuff in this frame? And I don't know. So I'm going to guess. So let's, let's look at scoot forward in time to right here. Anyway, while well, Captain Disillusion's in the air. And if he's a normal human, uh, like most humans are, then I can uh, guess his height. And let's just guess. Okay. Let's say he's, uh, 1.7 meters tall. That's pretty normal. So I'm going to go up here to my uh, calibration tool, new calibration stick, and it gives me this little stick. And I'm going to put one end at the top of his head and one at his feet. And I'm going to say that's 1.7 meters. 1.7. Done. Now when I mark objects on the frame, it, it will measure them in from not in pixels, but in distance units of meters with that scale. Let's go back to the beginning. I'm going to, I can't, there's nothing to mark here. So I'm going to, right there. You can see right here, uh, like the, the, the transition from his paint to his uh, non paint part of the face. I'm going to use that as my location to mark on him. So up here under track, new point mass. And so it gives me a point mass and I can just uh, right click on the location in each frame. Now I might want to do this. I can zoom in a little bit just so we can see a little bit better and see there's about the same location and it moves forward a frame. So this is pretty easy to do and there's not much data here. So we can do this fairly quickly. And if you want to talk about stuff while we do this, we could talk about stuff. But you can't really ask me a question because it's not really live, right? I'm recording this. Oh, there he's at the top. Okay, so it's just a great, it makes a great GIF. And I think Captain Disillusion uses it for, you know, like, oh, here I'm responding by showing this GIF of him jumping into the room. And I'll put a link to the video where this is from, where he looks at laminar flow. Great video as usual. Okay, so now he's in contact with the floor. So I'm actually going to stop there. Uh, I could I could keep going, but I think I'll stop there. So I have the data. My X data is just kind of noisy because he's not really doing anything in the X direction. He moves a little bit, and you can see here that the X values go from you know what 1.68 to one, so four centimeter difference, not that much. But I want to look at the Y motion, and now I do want to look at this too because let's mark, let's look at the location when he clearly is in. So right here, if you'll notice in this position graph, he's still moving up. And it looks like he should be in free fall. And I'm going to show you a picture in just a second. I'll show you the physics of it. But it, it it's not that it's not clear. But this is an important point. This frame 161 time 0.45 nine seconds because after that it looks like he's in free fall and that's the part I'm going to measure. So I want to do two things. I want to uh, find his velocity moving up uh, and then find if the acceleration is realistic because once you leave that platform you should be having an acceleration in the y direction of negative 9.8 meters per second that way and we can measure that right. Okay 
So let's, let me jump over to the, the paper and I'll show you why and what I'm going to do. If someone's moving with a constant velocity uh, like this up, then, oh, my paper's a little messed up. That's fine. Uh, then I can say the velocity in the y direction, that's a y, is going to be delta y over delta t. So if I make a graph of y versus time, delta y over delta t is the slope. So I just want to find the slope of that linear part, and that will be his vertical velocity. Now, once he's moving uh, and accelerating, then it will look like this, and that's not a line, that's a parabola. And if he's moving with a constant acceleration, y versus t, then he should have this, y is a function of t, is y initial plus vy initial minus one-half g t squared, oh, t. So that's my equation of a, of a, that's a parabolic equation. So if I fit a parabolic function to this, the term in front of t squared is going to be one-half the acceleration. And I can compare that to g, which is 9.8 uh, meters per second squared. So those are the two things I want to do. I want to find the velocity, and then I want to look at the acceleration. Let's do it. Switching back to the computer. Okay, here's my data. I'm going to analyze this. So I can right-click on this graph and click Analyze. And there's the graph, bigger. The first thing I want to do is to fit a linear function to this. I'm going to actually uh, drag this up a little bit, drag this down. It just makes it easier to grab stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to drag it this way, there. So now I can highlight the part that I really want, which is from here up to about there. That's all very linear. Let's fit a linear function to that. Uh, go to Analyze, Curve Fitter, and I want a line. And so it fit a line, there's my line. Very nice fit, very constant velocity, and I can get a value for that velocity. Uh, this says, uh, yeah, 4.76. I'm going to write that on the side so I don't forget. V0 equals 4.77 meters per second. Now, again, that velocity depends on my scale, right? If I pick a wrong scale for the height, then that velocity is off. Now let's look at this acceleration part. Here's a parabola. So I'm going to highlight this stuff, and I'm going to, I, you know, I got to, I don't want to include when he impacts the ground because then that's not an acceleration. And I will go to analyze curve fit parabola, and I'll fit a parabola to that, and it didn't do it. Why didn't it do it? Fit a parabola. Analyze, curve fitter, parabola. Huh. Let's see. Let's just close that, add that, to do it again. Analyze, curve fit. See, it didn't do it. Not a fixed value. Drag the yellow words. Let's just do this and go to analyze curve fitter parabola do the whole thing see it's not fitting that's weird that's kind of awkward i did this before drag home uh that's the data i want to fit analyze auto fit there we go that did it uh and we see here an acceleration a, a fit value of negative 6.2 okay so if, if I multiply that by 2, I get negative 12.4 meters per second squared, which is not 9.8. Now, there's a couple of options here. Option number one, uh, maybe he's not 1.7 meters. Uh, so we can try changing the scale height uh, of him. Option number two is this is not real, which is not real. Uh, and he just picked a value for the acceleration to to move him, or it could be in a different frame rate. He could have jumped part of the jump and used his motion, but then changed the frame rate to make it appear like he's in the air for longer uh, or shorter. It'd be shorter time. Yeah. 
I I think I think let's go with the height thing. Let's if I make him shorter, he's going to have a, a smaller initial velocity and a lower acceleration. So if I go over here to the tracker, let's just move this out of the way. Uh, let's just close that. I think I can close that. And I go to zoom to fit. And there's my, my bar, right? Let's say I'm going to just change this to 1.6. 1 1.6. That will change all my data. If I go back to analyze, now I have 5.5 for the A term. Multiply that by 2, that's 11 meters per second squared. So let's just make it a little bit shorter, 1.5. 1.5 and you could actually calculate this but I'm just doing it manually just because it's um, easier to see that way so 5.1 is still too high so I think I suspect that it's a time change thing right because 1.5 we're getting on the on the shorter side and I'm, I'm pretty sure he's normal size if not tall but there you go that's how you do a video analysis of something like that. It's kind of fun just to take videos off the internet and look at their motion. Um, now, I will say one thing, one more thing. The nice thing about this clip is that the camera stays stationary, right? The camera doesn't pan or zoom in and out, and that's a more difficult thing to take into account. The one thing I would love in this video is uh, a, a known scale. You know, let's say he had a meter stick sitting there. I guess I could look up that lamp uh, which is a little bit further away than he is and get a distance for that. But overall, I think using the height of a person is a pretty good idea. So there you go. Video analysis. That's a quick tutorial. Hope you enjoy that. I'll talk to you later.